very closely. I was with the census people yesterday. Uh, they claim the number is about $14,000 for every person you find. Mm -hmm. I like that. That sounds good. <laughs> because that is uh, something that you get aid for, the counties, everything is figured that way. And historically, we have been um, undercounted compared to the state. And I think uh, we're going to try to work with the Census Bureau, uh, try to work with the takers, uh, try to do everything we can to share any information that we possibly can uh, the, with that government agency that is uh, go-between to see if we can find every child and adult and get them counted. Because that will benefit everybody in this county for a decade. That's what I didn't realize. I mean, they do these annual updates, but they never change the way they distribute the money. So you got like one shot, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you brought it up because it's very important, very important. George? Well, just to put it on the table, because I we, we were meeting, we are likely to reappoint a couple of Housing Opportunities Commissioners and in the course of that conversation. Um, with respect to the Walter Johnson cluster, the HOC headquarters, some years ago, HOC really wanted to vacate its headquarters and was looking for um, alternative sites and actually had an option on a building in Wheaton that ultimately <coughs> fell through. But as we're looking at Wheaton revitalization, as we're looking at what's going to go at the Glenmont Metro Station, what's going to go at Shady Grove Metro Station, what's going to go at White Flint Metro Station, you know, HOC ought to be at a metro station. It's a, um, you know, it's, it's a good, particularly in this economy, it's a pretty attractive, long-term, stable, uh, either tenant or purchaser. And then that would free up the school and exactly. the Johnson cluster. So yeah. just you know, put that on the table. The planning board didn't recommend it, and I guess HOC, you know, Norm Dreyfus said, well, of course somebody's got to pay for it. And they're paying very little now for the use of the school, but it's not. It's a suboptimal location for HOC. On the questions that Mike Knapp was asking, I'm going to be the skunk at the dinner party and be a little more explicit about it. If the school system believes that the smart growth relocation plan is a threat to our ability to get into the buildings we need and reduce the number of portables that we want to reduce, either on the record or off the record or, you know, in our offices <coughs> privately or something. We really need to understand that because, um, as you know, the executive branch, Department of Finance is reassuring us everything's going to be fine, we can make everything fit, we can pay for all of it, it's going to be terrific. And if the school system has, has run the numbers and has numbers that tell us a story that we need to know, we really need to know it, maybe not here at this lunch table, but before we vote for that, because we're going to vote for that in advance of approving the CIP in the spring. And that's a big decision coming up. And the big question that a lot of it has is, what does it mean for high school modernizations that we've already delayed, that we promised communities that they're waiting for? What does it mean for meeting the bulge in elementary school enrollment? What does it mean for reducing portals? All the things you're talking about, which absolutely, I mean, you made a great, you started out with a great presentation, Jerry. And, you know, yeah, let's build some schools. Let's put some people to work. Let's stimulate the economy. Let's, you know, get rid of portables. Absolutely, I'm, I'm all for that. But if this smart growth revitalization plan puts any of that very attractive picture at risk, you know, don't just don't don't just be um, um, don't just allude to it. I mean, we, we really need to know the answer to that before we raise our hands and vote. Okay. Nancy. Uh, yes, I I I think that is a, a fair point. Uh, though I I don't see that personally as an issue. But if you have a concern, we <laughs> yeah. we I guess we request. That you let us know. Uh, likewise, on the, uh, I'd like to piggyback back on, on uh, Roger's questions, and to a certain degree, uh, George's as well. I'm, spend, I'm spending a lot of time sending people to groups. Uh, I hope they're going to groups. Uh, to, to validate what I'm telling communities, which is that my pay grade is not up to being, on the, being a member of the Board of Education. Uh, and we defer entirely to the board, as far as I'm concerned, on issues of school locations, boundary changes, and the like. And there's a certain amount of confusion right now uh, because of what the planning board is saying with Eastern and West Clinton about who does what. Yeah. And uh, so it would be very helpful, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but it would be very helpful when you weigh in on the planning to make that point if that is. Uh, uh, something you agree with because I don't want to be conveying to I don't want communities to see us assuming responsibilities that I think we very much um, 
by deporting you all. Um, and I, th I think that's important in terms of understanding jurisdictional obligation and responsibility and uh, long-term uh, uh, site selection needs. And the process for that is never entirely crystal clear, but there, you have your own process and you have your own decisions for boundaries and your, your, your determinations as to school capacity and whatnot that we, although we do some of that in the growth policy, we, at the end of the day, where the children will go is a decision that you all make and we do not mess with that. And so it would be helpful, I think, um, um, for you all to, to get that word out uh, so uh, Bruce can be busy with his company. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one of the, I mean, and I appreciate that, and you've been very good and the members of your body have been very good. It's more than just numbers. Yep. And there lies the, the challenge and the opportunity. Parkland, for example, was a school that really had about 1,200 kids in 1999 and was heading to 1,400. But when you looked at the population, it was almost all children living in poverty. They had big class sizes plenty of portables and it, those portables have taken over their playgrounds. Mm -hmm. Had not some of you that were on the board, and I want to thank you all for doing that, stuck with us. We had to reopen two more middle schools in that area. <coughs> and so it was program redistribution as right, well as right. that. So it isn't just as easy to say, well, we've got a school on this site that's reopened. It's a matter of you got to how many programs can you put in? What kind of programs they are? How do you aggregate where everybody's got a fair shot? And we will be doing that. And, and, and you may all, the system may as well, you know, make different kinds of determinations about magnet Absolutely. Uh, initiatives or whatnot at different schools that may make schools that people had issues about previously the most desirable schools on the planet at a later point. We just don't know. And we defer to you to make If we don't do it that way, one of our biggest challenges is variability. Yeah. And what we're doing is trying to cut down on the variability because we have some of the finest schools in America. And then we have some that we are working very hard. They're challenged. And we have to do that by changing programs sometimes or changing uh, the outlook and expectations. Uh, our children can achieve at very high levels. I'm convinced of that. It's finding the right combination. Now that isn't as easy as just X number of kids live in this area and we'll put Y number of schools to meet X number of kids. Because we're looking for an overall outcome of getting a kid to college ready. And I think your board has done a very good job of doing that. And that's what Arnie Duncan, the U.S. Secretary of Education, that's why House Urban, uh, you know, HUD Secretary was here. That's why Secretary Locke, Commerce, you know, has children here. You're getting those outcomes. Uh, we will, though, in answer to George's question, be putting a CIP forward. I, I, I am charged with uh, putting forward what the system needs. <coughs> the board is an elected body and you're an elected body. You have to deal with the political uh, issues with regard to what we put forward. Uh, what we're going to put forward, though, is going to be necessary, absolutely necessary, to meet the enrollment. And absolutely, the timing couldn't be better with the bonds and the construction costs. And uh, I think it will be uh, up to the body to make those decisions about how you want to allocate your Funds. And I'm going to try to get that as quickly as I can get it to them in October so you can know. Um, George, just um, my personal reflection on kind of where we're at. If we're going to do smart growth, then let's do it in a smart way. Because if we look at some of what we're seeing in our schools, we're seeing gaps. Um, you know, Oakland.